Hi there, and let's get to it. So if you are using a .edo type of edit decision list, right click on the folder containing the rushes for your film and add the folder or the folder and its subfolders based on the EDL that you identify. If I was to go to my desktop, my XML doesn't show up because it is not a .edl type edit decision list. Instead, what we have to do is go into our file menu and select import AAF, EDL, XML. Hey, that's the one that we're using. So now we get transported to the edit page, which is where the timelines are contained. I'm going to select desktop, and now I can see my XML showing up at the top. So I'm going to click on it and say open. This will now give me a few controls where the source is, which timeline I specifically want to use, what time code I want to begin with. I definitely want to set my project settings according to that timeline. And it even asks me if I want to automatically import source clips into the media pool based on this EDL. This is preferably what you want to do, because if you're working on a project which contains terabytes of footage, it would be quite useful to only import the clips that were used in the final edit. Everything else is set to go, so I'm going to click OK. And I reveal that the edit that I had inside of Premiere has now been replicated inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now the only thing left to do is to conform the video. So what's conforming? It's a very formal sounding word that describes a process in which we go through the edit in our timeline and try to ensure that all of the clips and all of the effects have come across from our original edit. Now, of course, one way is to open up your translation file and identify immediately what did not come across. And I could give it a quick look and immediately notify them that I did not receive the preliminary RGB curves grade that they had applied. They could then choose to export that clip separately at a high quality so that I could potentially use it in my sequence. Or maybe they were just applying a very rough grade, in which case I could just use that self-contained file that they exported. Speaking of that self-contained file, I'm going to go find it. Here it is. I'm going to import this too. And I'm going to make bins for everything just to keep things nice and tidy. So what I do with this file then is click and drag and drop it in my second video track. I could then select it, open up Inspector, and lower the opacity to 50. And then I just close Inspector by clicking on the word Inspector. So now I'm able to play back through the film with both clips playing at the top and at the bottom, and I can see if there's anything that's off. So for example, in this part of the sequence, I had retimed the clip to be at 50% speed, and it seems to have come across. I can verify that by looking in the bottom left corner of the clips on my timeline, and I can see this little speedometer icon that lets me know that the clip has been retimed. Another thing that's come across has been the fade-in at the beginning. I already know that the curves did not come across. So if I make this clip 100% visible and I turn it on and off, you can see how different it looks from the clip that's been imported through the EDL. Something that did not come across, and worryingly that I did not receive a line on inside of the translation results, was this change in scale. So if I play the original clip, you can see that it's playing at double the speed, and then suddenly the scale goes up from 100 to about 120. In the clip that got connected inside of DaVinci Resolve, that speed change has occurred, but the scale animation has not. I can also verify using my previous method of simply playing back the above footage at 50% opacity. And you can see as soon as the scale change starts happening, it makes a huge difference in the way that we see the film. The conforming process can be quite time consuming because you do have to go through each edit point and each clip to ensure that everything in terms of timing, in terms of the color and the transform properties is all matched up. Once that's done, you know you have an exact replica of what the editor had and you can then proceed to the color grading workflow. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.